Anyway, that being said, um, I'm opening up to questions now. Anybody has any questions about anything, I'll uh, be glad to answer those right now. Um, the media or anybody else. Uh, how do we keep the momentum going? We really turn the page from one year to another, and uh, so we don't really talk and dwell a whole lot about what we did last year and how it's carrying over this year. Now, uh, the experience of having guys played in games, you hope that carries over from one year to another. But, you know, we, we really know, and you're going to get some coach speak here, Dr. Smith, but you really know that we're, you know, we're, we're zero and zero. What we did last year, what we played for last year, and all that stuff was great at the time, but... You know, that's not something that we really focus on. We focus on, on going ahead. Now, again, having guys in our program who've played some and been a part of some, game, you know, winning some games and finding a way to win games, which is something that we didn't do when, when we initially got here, you know, you hope that carries over in that belief. And that's probably the biggest thing is just getting, getting players and coaches, but especially your players, to believe that you're going to get yourself in games against good quality opponents and find ways to win games. And, and so hopefully we can draw from that experience. We have uh, one home game at, at night, 19. Why don't we have more 19 in that conference room or you know, 19? Well, it, it really kind of depends uh, on who we're playing and when we're playing. And we do open up with Wayne State at the beginning of the year. And uh, we actually did a, we did a study with our, our team within the conference a couple years ago. And I think uh, – we actually, there was only one team in our conference that, that drew better at night than they did during the day. So um, from that standpoint, uh, that's really kind of why we've got, gone it that way. Sometimes with uh, your opponent a little bit, if they're coming from a long ways, um, you try and play in the afternoon, so they do the same to you. But the way it stands right now, we've got our opening game against uh, Wayne State is at 6 o'clock, and then our second game of the year down at the University of Sioux Falls at 6.30, and then we're primarily afternoon games. For the most part, we play St. Cloud at 4 o'clock, so I'm not sure if that's afternoon or evening or what time that is, but that's when we play them. So, uh, But other than that, we're pro primarily afternoon games. And I think that, honestly, that's what players and coaches like the most, <laughs> to be honest with you. Coach Sather would probably tell you the same thing. If he had a choice, he'd play in the afternoon, but uh, we don't let him do that. So, What else? Uh, other questions? What is Wayne State like, Coach Tim? Good question. Uh, I believe they have, from what we've done, uh, you know, our scouting stuff and our coaches, we really watch all of our upcoming opponents in the summer. Um, they return, I think, about seven or eight starters on each side of the ball, you know. Um, so they did have the, the defensive player of the year in the conference last year who was a senior who graduated, which is good because we tried to block him for a couple of years and we had a heck of a time with that. So it's good that he won't be here on the, the 7th of September. But... Uh, you know, they've typically been a pretty big physical team. And their location, being in Nebraska, you know, they really um, don't compete with a whole lot of maybe Nebraska Kearney, maybe Shadron a little bit in terms of Omaha-Lincoln when you get Division II players. And then when University of Nebraska-Omaha dropped football a couple of years ago, I think that's helped those schools as well because there's clearly a lot of guys running around who are maybe D Division II, Division I, borderline guys who are – who are not playing there. So their talent level is always good. They're probably their biggest thing over the, the, the past seven or eight years has been their consistency. They've had, I think they've had six or seven, eight consecutive winning seasons, something like that. So they're, they're really just generally a real physical team and, and um, probably a prototypical team in our league. But return a lot of guys, return their quarterback, return a lot of guys on the offensive line, defensive line, and, and a couple skill guys too. So, um, yeah, you know, I would say they fit into the stereotype of, a, a, you know, a top tier Northern Sun team that we'll play this year. And really, we probably won't spend a whole lot of time on them until we get until towards the end of the month, the first week of school and stuff. We really will keep most, most of our focus on trying to get better with what we're doing. What else? Any other questions? I know Derek Dinger wanted to hear Matt Anderson speak, he said. So, uh, other than that. Well, running back, coach, you know, since you've been here, running back, you know, injuries, different things, uh, how comfortable you feel at the running back position this season? That's a good question. Uh, Ryan, and, and that's exactly right. Going back to our first year, when we had Montrell Richardson, who was really an all-conference player. He got hurt. We, we've come across guys. That's just the nature of the, of the position a little bit. So, you know, the way it stands right now, we've got really three or four guys at the running back position. John John Hughes, Terrell Walker both played a lot last year. We think Stephen Erlinson's really going to be a good back in our league and can come 
in and compete and play right away. And then I said Cam Pudwell really is a hybrid running back, fullback, tailback kind of guy, you know, where we, we use him in different situations, but he, all, he just gives us a whole other dimension from a physical standpoint. So, yeah, depth there, we just considered, and, and recruiting-wise, we just continued to recruit and sign running backs because we've come across that so many times where we're shorthanded and we're trying to find ways to put, play somebody else at running back who maybe hasn't played it before or whatever, and you hate doing that in the middle of the year. So the other thing with that is generally a high school running back is usually one of their best one or two players on their team, you know. So if a guy's that good of a player in high school, he can, if for some reason he can't play running back, he's going to be able to come in and play safety, wide receiver, linebacker, something like that eventually uh, because he is a good football player. So that's something we, we as a coaching staff, you, you know, you can't have too many big guys and we really can't have too many of those skill kind of guys that can come in and play. So, you know, we always feel you want to be at least three deep at that spot because of they're the guys that all the, all the mean defensive guys are chasing after those guys. So we want to try and keep those guys healthy. Really the most overall depth that we've had. You know, since I've been here, I th I feel. Carmen. Do you anticipate any freshmen playing this year, or do you think most of them will? Good question. Uh, you know, we, we've probably earmarked and and uh, identified a couple, two or three. Well, we're going to have to have a freshman kicker play because that's all we've got. We've got two of them, so one or both of those two guys are going to play. Um, and then it, it's really still early enough. Our freshman really are just trying to figure out where to run on the field when you blow the whistle. So it's not fair to evaluate them after two days, but there are a couple guys at, at some spots, whether it's depth, you know, um, at, at a couple of different positions where we may have to look to have, you know, maybe like wide receiver being one where we don't have a lot of depth there. We need to, we need to uh, create some competition. And, and, and some of those positions, wide receiver, running back, those guys are usually more ready to play as or have a better chance of playing at freshman. It's hard for a an offense alignment or defense alignment to come in and play as a true freshman. It can be done, but it's hard to do because it's such a physical position. Quarterbacks have so much to learn. Linebackers and safeties have so much to learn. So there's some spots it's harder to do, but there's some positions, I think. As we go along here in the next week, we, we're going to get those young guys rolling in with our older guys and see if they can compete and play at that level. So um, it's probably too early to really tell you any names of guys, but but for sure probably one of the kickers because we are planning on kicking it kicking off and extra points and field goals this year. So we're going to have to do that. And both of those two guys have shown good things already. So we think they're both capable of be good competition at that spot. Anything else? What about this offseason? You know, you had the, you know, Logan Josh was like, you know, preseason All-American by some, some of the publications and some other guys were recognized. You know, you're worried about the Saturday and you're worried about the stuff, you know, on the field and everything. But at the same time, how nice is it to see uh, some players get recognized and the program ultimately yeah, well, that really just comes with a direct, um, that's a direct result of winning more games. And that's what we tell our guys all the time. If you want to win awards, if you're into individual awards, which really none of our guys are, and any of those guys who got awards really aren't into that anyway. But if you are, you want to, you want to be on a good team. Because inevitably, those are going to be the teams that, the teams that win the most games are going to have the guys that win the most awards. They're not necessarily the best players. Um, so one year I coached, uh, when I was at the University of North Dakota, we had, the year we won the national championship, we had seven guys who were named to one All-American team or another. And then the next year, we didn't have any. We didn't have as good a year. So funny how that works. So we know if, uh, that's just a result of, of having some success. But our guys know they're not really into that too much, and neither are we. So we, we really don't make too big a deal about it. But it is good program recognition for sure. Anything else? Okay, well, that being said, if there's anybody, we, our coaches are all available. I'll just real briefly introduce these guys. Players can walk up here. If you want to talk to them about anything, you can do that. Uh, I appreciate you coming out here. Great turnout, great facility. Um, our coaching staff, not only our football staff, but our other uh, athletic department staff, great to have everybody here. And um, we open up on September 7th. We do have a scrimmage. Uh, inter our our inter-squad scrimmage will be on uh, Thursday. August 29th. That's a Thursday night. We'll be probably at 6:30 out at Swisher Field. That'll be the last time that we we have a a, a full slated scrimmage, uh, offense, defense kind of stuff, and that'll be a, 
it won't be scripted. We'll, we'll move the chains and we'll do that. You know, it'll be a little bit um, something, uh, you know, we won't probably do every aspect of the game, but that'll be our chance. If you want to come out and watch our team, anybody's free to come out of practice at any time, but certainly come out uh, on that night and come out and watch our team and get a chance to get a preview of the, of the 2013 Wolves. But we're excited. We're excited with our, probably our work ethic of our, of our players and coaches. That's probably, honestly, the thing that excites me the most. Our guys show up every day and they want to get to work. They want to get stuff done. Kind of a no-nonsense group. Sometimes um, you got to really work hard. And I'm really funny. I'm hilarious. And I really have a hard time getting them to laugh at some of my jokes sometimes because they're locked in and they want to they wanna get to work. And that's really what we're all about is showing up and working every day. And that's one thing our guys have done going back to last November through the winter and spring ball. And, again, we did not have great conditions for the spring. We were shoveling snow. We were out there in uh, some cold weather, uh, you know, 5, 10 degrees. Some mornings we were out there practicing. Our guys don't complain. They just show up and get to work, and that's what I like about our team. That's probably the thing that excites me the most. They work hard, and they expect to do well when we get out in the field. So that part of it's exciting for me. And love to have you out there for practice anytime, and uh, come on out uh, for our scrimmage. And, and certainly, as Dr. Smith said, get out there on September 7th and tailgate. It'll be a big deal, and, and we want to get a lot of folks out there for our, for our home opener. So thanks for your time. With that, I'll just go ahead and introduce the guys. The guys, if you want to walk up here, um, and uh, anybody can ask them any questions they want when we're done. I'll be available, as will our coaching staff. We'll start off with. Uh, oh, I, we will start off. We'll start off with um, at least a couple guys who won awards last year. Logan Dosh. Logan, you can go ahead and walk up here. Logan was a first-team All-Conference player for us last year. Ike Sirleaf. Uh, Logan's a defensive back. Ike Sirleaf's a defensive lineman. He was second-team All-Conference for us. Jared Jacobson, our, our quarterback, was an honorable mention All-Conference player for us. And uh, Jordan Piatz wide receiver, also an all-conference all honorable mention selection for us as well. Um, now I'll just keep going back there. Spencer Flaccus, tight end. Defensive back, Jason Gaditz. Okay, tight end, Ben Jastrom. Defensive back, Matt Anderson. Are you going to come up here and talk, Matt? Okay. You can keep moving. Okay. Outside linebacker, Ryan Waybrecht. Uh, quarterback, Zach MD. Uh, offensive lineman, Justin Parsons. Outside linebacker Mike Duke, offensive lineman Jay Colgeen, defensive back Paul Woodward, uh, wide receiver Will Carlson. They keep sliding in behind you there, Apollo. Defensive lineman Apollo Ford, defensive lineman Scott Taggart, Mike Alberts, uh, inside linebacker Mike Alberts, uh, fullback tight end Dallas Lopez, offensive lineman John Caspers, offensive lineman Kyle Cabral. And running back John Hughes. So that's like I said, these are our seniors and our and our fourth year juniors. These guys have really, for the most part, been here the whole time. We have. We might be, might be missing a guy or two. So, that any other questions? If not, thanks for everything. Uh, we're open to for any other questions afterwards. And uh, go Wolves! Thank you.